Given that the DIY BMS has recently been featured on the Great Scott channel, I think it's time I took a little bit of a look at it again and explained my experiences with it over the last 12 months. So for anybody that's new to my channel, this is my setup here in the solar shed in the north of England. I have a 7S 20p pack that means i've got seven cells in series and 20 cells in parallel in each of those groups there that means i need seven diy bms cell modules and uh, i also have one wemos d1 mini which is the diy bms controller the controller over here talks to each of the individual modules over these wires here, which uses I squared C. And that means that the I squared C communication needs to be isolated so that there's no shorts in this pack. And that is completed by an IC up here, the ADUM. 1250 ARZ, the Adam 1250, as I like to call it. This small power wall is made up of 18650s from uh, laptop batteries that I've recycled and tested and each one of those 18650s has an average of 2.5 amp hours of capacity within them or 2500 milliamp hours. And when you put 20 of those cells in parallel, well that gives you about 50 amp hours of capacity, times that by the voltage of a 7S system, and this system is roughly one kilowatt hour. Now this small power wall is solar charged through this EP Ever Tracer A MPPT solar charge controller and two 100 watt solar panels which are on the roof of the shed and therefore these cells are cycled every day. Not a deep discharge by any means whatsoever, but uh, they are charged and discharged to some degree every single day. Now, it's exactly a year since I did my first video on the DIY BMS, where I'd drawn out this pencil schematic from Stuart Pittaway's design of this cell module. And I went through the uh, schematic here and explained it to the best of my ability. And of course, I'll put a card up here in the top corner to that video. It took me a further three months to actually build all the PCBs and populate them with all the components and get to the point of provisioning the DIY BMS, which I did in the summer of 2018. Six months ago, I decided to do a discharge test of my little power wall here, hoping to get one kilowatt hour. I uh, attached a 100 watt bulb here to this inverter and ran this pack for a number of hours. Sadly, I just missed out on the one kilowatt hour, even if you take into account the inefficiencies of uh, inverting the DC to AC. And that's because this group of cells here, the one that I refer to as cell 5, seems to have a slightly lower capacity than the groups around it. Using the DIY BMS, I was able to see that the voltage of cell 5 was sagging and dropping much quicker than all the other modules. And that was excellent because it meant I could decide to stop the test because I knew cell 5 was getting to a very low limit, less than 3 volts. It is worth pointing out that the DIY BMS does just monitor each individual group of cells. It doesn't monitor the whole voltage of the whole pack. By default, it doesn't have a relay that it controls to switch off the whole pack if the whole pack voltage gets too low, or of course, if it gets too high either. But in my case, that's not a big problem. My solar charge controller is set to ensure that the whole battery bank doesn't get overcharged. And it will turn off its load if the voltage of the whole battery bank gets too low. And my inverter here also has a low voltage disconnect safety feature. My last video about the DIY BMS was about three months ago. And it was when I was having an issue. It was early December and it was getting cold out here in the shed on wintry nights. And I was having trouble with this part of the circuit here. 
Stuart was very cleverly using this pin here, PB5, and this, the mister, to measure the temperature of the module. But in there lied an issue, because PB5 is also the reset pin of the AT Tiny. If you want a full explanation of that problem and how I fixed it, well, you can see the video that's appeared in the top right corner. If you've been following my videos on the DIY BMS, well, I'm afraid that was a bit of a recap for you. But there is something new which I'd like to show you in this video as well. If you look at the main commercial Powerwall BMS systems, they have a nice management console and crucially it shows you a lot of history now this isn't possible here remember this does just run from the wemos d1 mini or it does in my case so it doesn't have a lot of memory to remember a lot of statistics for me colin hickey made a huge improvement to the diy bms management console software when he implemented influx db this allows us to read those statistics and place them into another system or another dashboard. Here I'm using Grafana to read that information from InfluxDB. It's showing me the voltage of each of the modules in my pack. It's showing the history of the variance of that voltage. I'm also calculating an average voltage over here. It's showing me the status, whether it's happy or whether it's in bypass mode, and also the temperature of each module as well. And because I've had Grafana running for some time now, well, I can say, I don't know, let's have a look at the uh, variance in my uh, cell voltages over the last month. And there they are. This is the, uh, the correlation between each of the cells. And as you can see, they're tracking each other really quite nicely. But let me show you a printout that I've got. In this printout, I've looked at the uh, correlation of the voltage of each of the modules um, all the way back to the 1st of January 2019, because I've had Grafana running now for a few months. Unfortunately, throughout December and in early January, uh, there wasn't much sun, and therefore my pack was, well, much lower in voltage than I like it to be each day. But as you can see, this red line here is considerably lower than the rest of the modules. Now, that is cell 5. There you go, cell 5. That red line is much, much lower. Thankfully, it's been brought back into line again in February, and it's remained in line ever since. But when the packs start drooping in voltage, well, this one droops a lot more. And Grafana allows me to see all that information. It's absolutely invaluable. I think being able to display historical statistics in something like Grafana really does bring the DIY BMS up to the level of a lot of commercial BMS products out there. So there we are then. I've spent a year here in the shed with the DIY BMS and I wouldn't be without it. It almost goes without saying that I'm hugely grateful to Stuart Pittaway for all his work on the DIY BMS, both on the design of the hardware and of course the software. I'm also hugely grateful to Colin Hickey, who has also added a lot of great features to the controller software. If you've got any more questions about the DIY BMS, do place them in the comments below, where hopefully I, or perhaps Colin or Stuart, will be able to answer them for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.